Okay, folks, we are getting ready for this event here. We are at Lander Street Vintage in Seattle, and this is a great modernist mall. So what will people bring to an appraisal fair at a store that is known for really high-end designer modernism? No telling, because we're in Seattle. So we could get people who have old things that have been in their house for years, or we could get people who are collectors and love to frequent this place. I'm very curious to see how this will differ from other appraisal fairs we've done, so let's watch together. Good morning. Oh, I'm so oh. excited to meet you. Oh, I'm so glad to meet you too. Well, I... Uh, Hello there, everybody. The only thing I know about this... Do you want me to say what I know? Yes, please. Okay, just that it's a taper. Like, I thought it was an anteater. Um, I tried to even Google the address on the bottom, but... Because it, it, I think it translates like a jewelry store or something. But... Um, there's nothing there now, I, I think, except apartment buildings. We see old addresses from things, but of course those old addresses are for things that are also no longer there, which in some ways makes it more interesting. You are right, it is a taper, which is fun. It's interesting to see a carving of an animal that isn't an American animal. Uh -huh. We're so used to seeing the things that we see here. I remember when I worked at the Woodland Park Zoo, they had just gotten a taper and they built a special pool for it because they were trying to make the exhibits as natural as they could for the animals. Sure. And so, uh -huh. and I remember the taper seemed a, a little bit lost, like it wasn't <laughs> sure why it was what in the Northern in Hemisphere, yeah. exactly. So, no, it's a really wonderful piece. Um, what we how did you get it i bought it in longview at a charity shop i like the fact that it's got the original tag on it uh, we can tell by the print style of the tag and also the style of the carving that this piece was likely made sometime between the 1930s and maybe the early 1950s. We may not be able to say exactly who the carver was, but we can tell that they had some pretty good skill. It's got a nice Greek key pattern around the bottom. Uh, there's a lot of detail to the animal itself and the eyes are really good. Uh, I think it's hard to do eyes that are small and it's got the sunken part uh, and everything is correct. Like I said, because I worked at the zoo when we had the taper, this is a very, very accurate rendition. There's going to be a handful of, uh, including some of the people I worked with at the time, offbeat uh, zoologists who say, oh gosh, you know, I really, uh, you never see anything with the taper on it. I would uh -huh. like to have that. So it was originally meant to hold toothpicks or matches or that okay, sort of that's thing. That's what I was really wondering. Yes, I yes, exactly. <laughs> because it's a rather small bowl and it's dished a little and that way the matchstick or the toothpick can lean without falling out. Okay. Yeah. It won't flip yeah, over the side. It can't be an ashtray. Right, no, yeah, and especially in nice. wood it would uh -huh. burn. It was too nice, yeah. And you've got a couple of different kinds of wood here. You have mahogany, but you have some other exotic woods as well. So you might see a retail value on this around maybe 85 to to $100 in the right place, really? I would think, these days. Right. Well, thank you. Yes, something it. a little different. Yeah. And what did you bring? I brought this uh, pig. <laughs> yes. Dog. And how did you get this very fine swine? <laughs> I, <might say. laughs> I found that at uh, Valley Village, and I just thought it was beautiful. So wow. I picked it up. Well, it is really well done, and it's interesting because um, it's got a very solid green felt on here. This is a replacement. It might have had the same color felt originally, but um, there's just I can just tell it doesn't completely cover in the way that it's cut. Yeah, I, I don't see anything to indicate that it's not bronze. Sometimes they'll do spelter where it's a bronze patina over another metal, uh, but we really can't see the base. And it has the weight of bronze. I think it's hollow bronze, but I believe it is bronze. She looks like she has recently had piglets. <laughs> we see a lot of this sort of thing from, again, about the same time as yours piece. 1930s, 1940s, I would think that would be the era on this. By the way it's shaped as well as the way the base is made, the material the base is made in. This piece I believe to be American. Yes, and the signature is quite small. Yeah, that definitely is bronze. We can definitely tell after we look underneath here. It's possible that it's by the Dodge Company. They did a lot of this sort of work in the mid 20th century. You see a lot of horses and other farm animals by them. It seems like their quality of work. Uh, the signature is a little bit obscured because of where it is, so it's yeah. not absolutely possible to tell for sure, but that's what I would be leaning towards. And Dodge pieces are pretty good. Uh, you would think the value of this is probably $125 would be a rough retail estimate on that. 
Okay. I, I think you did very well. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. People say you can't find things at thrift stores, but they're wrong. Oh, I find oh, them yeah. all the time. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so exciting to meet you. Oh, well, thank you. It's great to meet you, too. So Tell me. to see you that on screen. I, I, yes, I know. It is different. At, uh, first, my name's George, of Hi, course. Hi, Hazel. Nice Hazel, to meet you. great to meet what? you. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you, too. Uh, so I bought this. Um, we found this at an estate sale maybe a few months ago. Oh, very um, nice. We just thought it was cute, and I like the color pink. And, I do, too. Um, I keep talking about I think pink is going to make yes, a comeback, sure. and I yeah. think it is really starting to. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And, um, yeah, I have a whole cubby of just pink things. So. Oh, that's great. Well, this is absolutely Murano glass. Oh, it is. Yeah, oh, there's is. no doubt about that. And it may be by Fratelli Toso. That okay. would be my best guess. Sure based on the color. Uh, lots of Murano companies made similar pieces, right. and I would say your date on this is probably mid-1950s. Oh, we wow. see a lot of, yeah, it's a little older piece. We see a lot of the pink with the gold in it around yeah. that time. That was a very popular color combination, and it kind of lasted into the mid-60s, and then things change, and it's all about hot pink oh, after okay. that. Yeah. So usually these uh, dish pieces like this are not signed in any way. I'm making the attribute based on the shape and based mm -hmm. on the color and I don't see a signature on here it does have lots of wear which it should which is great because it's as old as it is it could be mm -hmm. 65 or 70 years old do you mind telling me what you paid at the estate sale he got it for two dollars and fifty cents wow <laughs> Well, that's a great deal. I yes. uh, that's a we fantastic no deal. <laughs> oh no, 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 you can't go wrong for that. These are pretty popular. I have a similar piece for sale. I'm asking forty five dollars okay. for mine. I think somewhere between forty and fifty is a pretty normal selling oh, price for these great. now. And so then, tell me okay. what you have. Um, I guess it's a glass baseball. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, this is interesting because it's got a very thick, heavy base, and it's pressed like it was done in a mold. But when we hold it up on the back, you can tell it was hand blown mm -hmm. uh, because it does have a little bit of a pontal on the finish here. Yeah. And so this is a blown molded piece. And my guess is that this is going to be one of our American makers from Ohio. When I hold it up to the light, I'm looking to see how much opalescent fire it has to it. And it actually has a little more than I expected. Mm -hmm. They have to put certain chemicals in the milk glass. A lot of them nowadays, it's sort of a dull gray when you hold it up to light. But when I hold this one up, I can see an opal glow around the edges. And that usually means a piece that was made in the 1950s or earlier, mm. because most of the companies quit doing this stuff with the opal fire in it after that time, unless it was a specialty art glass company. And this was made more as a novelty. Which company made it is not necessarily something I'm going to be able to tell you. My guess is one of the smaller Ohio uh, studio glass companies. Nowadays, if we looked at it, we'd think, well, maybe Mosser or one of those, but uh, this is before their time. It's going to be for a baseball fan. It's something that's specific to them. And yeah. I would think as a glass novelty, probably 35 to $45 okay. would be okay. a, a general price range. Yeah. Right. And I didn't ask you what you paid for it. Uh, 45 45 Yeah, <laughs> see, you're right in the ballpark okay. there. Yeah. I got it for a baseball right. fan. Well, yeah. that's perfect. That's exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And totally. I think that you got a good deal for what it was. Yeah. I'm a collector, and, you know, it's great when you find something that's really, right. really cheap. But when you're buying it for you, yes. to me, yeah. it's like as long as you're paying fairly. Yes. Yeah. My attitude is once it's in my house, I'm keeping it forever. Right. Right. So who right. cares? It's just <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, very good. Well, it's All wonderful right. to meet you. I'm yes. glad you came. Thank Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Oh, isn't this pretty? So how did you get this? I found it in my crawl space many years ago. Really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. It was wrapped in a blanket and my husband believed it's valuable. So I don't know. Okay, well, let's take a look. <laughs> it's, um, it's nicely done. It looks like poppies in a field. It's very impressionistic. It's not too literal. Um, it does have a signature, but the signature is initials, and I, I don't recognize the signature based on the initials. It looks like it's A-R-H-M, probably a good, talented artist who did these for themselves, uh, but there are two values here. There's the value of the painting, and then there's the value of the frame, and they both do have value. It's an older frame. 
than the picture. I believe the picture was painted later on, it's painted on canvas. And when I look at the frame it's set in, it doesn't have as much aging as this frame. Mm -hmm. So I think what they did was they took a piece that they liked out of probably a 1950s or 60s frame, and then they put it in an older frame. This outer frame, I believe, is from probably the 1910s or so. <laughs> Which is interesting because the poppy paintings I'm pop... Not, I'm not ignoring you, I'm just writing notes. No, no, please go <laughs> right ahead. The painting of poppies was actually very popular in the 19-teens, so I think whoever got this piece just thought that this frame was more appropriate for the style of the painting. I don't believe that it's a listed artist, uh, and so we look at it as more of a decorative object, even though it does have age. The painting's probably 50 years old, and the frame is probably 100 years old. I would say that the value of the painting by itself would be somewhere in the $75 to $100 range. I believe the value of the frame by itself would be somewhere in the $50 range. And I think that the painting in the frame, if you were to see it shown in a store like this, you might see a price around $135 to $150 would be my estimate. Okay. That's pretty awesome for finding it just rolled up in a rug, right? right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> we have to come just to see you. Yeah, it's oh, lovely to see you again. It's been a really long yeah, time. I has. like what you're wearing. Thank you. That looks like uh, Alexandrite glass. It belonged to my great aunt who oh. never wore a piece of jewelry. Really? And when she passed away, we went through her stuff and I went... Holy cow. Oh, yeah, that's a yeah. beautiful piece. Yeah. How fun. Okay, let's take a look at this. I like the design, first of all. It seems very modernist with sort of a little asymmetry. How did you get this ring? You wouldn't believe it if I told you. <laughs> he found it in his mother's car. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I can tell you that his cousin was a pawnbroker. Oh, interesting. And we think it belonged to his aunt, and she either dropped it in there. He was cleaning out his mother's car one day. Oh, how interesting. Well, it's got the Tiffany & Company signature. I don't know if you've looked at it with a loop before to see that, but <laughs> that's pretty I'm, nice. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also marked 14 carats, so it's white gold. It has some touch marks with the letter T in it. Love it. Or they joined two pieces together, one was palladium. Yeah, it does look like they might have joined a couple of wedding sets. And the prongs are different on the middle one. Yeah, I do believe that you have it right. I think that what they've got is one was an engagement ring and one was a wedding ring. One was 14 karat and then your middle band is the one that appears to have the Tiffany label and the palladium. I'll tell you what I know and I'll tell you what I think you should do if you want to know more. I do think it needs to be um, t looked at by a gemologist uh, to make sure that we're understanding that and that all the materials that are marked on there are actually the materials that are in this because there are fake marks too and I don't have a gold tester here and I definitely don't have anything that does palladium. So if you see a jewelry store that has one of those free jewelry appraisal, bring an item in today and have it looked at, I would say that'd be a good place to start unless you have a gemologist that you go to all the time. We have a wedding set and an engagement ring and then they fuse them all together and that's why we have marks for different materials. Uh, the prongs look different between the different pieces and the two that are marked 14 karat gold the prongs seem very similar so i think that was the original set and then the tiffany piece i believe was sandwiched in the middle of them valuation from that point is going to be a little bit tricky because you've got part of it is tiffany but the rest of it isn't you've got different materials and then the question is what kind of stones did they use and they do need cleaning <laughs> If it's what it says, and if we can take it just at face value, I think you're probably looking at somewhere in a three to four thousand dollar range. Well, yes. it's great to see you. Well, thank I you. I'm really, really glad you came. We do the uh, Green River Depression Glass Show. That oh, show. that's wonderful. We just did it in February. That show is 40 years old. Because it's Northwest, and you live in the Northwest. And I'm sure you've looked at hundreds, thousands of pieces by 
him and, and Elton Bennett. So you yes. actually, it might be a good use of our time together. Now tell me how you got this piece. So I don't usually actually talk about them. <laughs> I got it at a thrift store. Oh, that's fantastic. The last piece I got by him was at a thrift store, too, and I was so surprised because I thought by now surely everybody would know who Walton Butts is. He worked basically in the same time as Elton Bennett. I've heard people say, oh, he ripped off Elton Bennett for all his ideas, but I think they were doing it at the same time. I really think you know, he gets equal and some of his contemporaries. His contemporaries. Yeah, I think people in art, you know, there's such diffusion between them, and I think people come to certain ideas at certain times, well, and so... ideas bounce back and forth, and they evolve. And they everything. evolve, exactly. And so I have found, I've been buying Walton Butts for years. A long time ago, people said, oh, you should only buy Bennett. And I said, no, I don't think that's true. And Walton Butts sells very well. And mm -hmm. it's actually selling for prices that are getting closer and closer to Bennett prices. Oh, interesting. This one's nice. It's very indicative of the work. Um, you know, he didn't do as much of a background as Bennett did. I mean, in yeah. the Bennett piece, you'd have mountains and some more stuff right. going on way in the background. So it's not quite as three-dimensional, but it's, it's a nice piece. Uh, Quiet Harbor, I think, was based on his time at Westport. It's just, it's a nice large piece piece too and so um and, and so i should tell you i already put a price tag on it i have to admit i snuck a look at your tag because i'm always curious what other people's mm -hmm. are opinions i i've got to tell you I, our opinion is almost exactly the same i if you had asked me how would i price this i would have mm -hmm. said i'd put 295 on it and what did i put you have 300 on it yeah <laughs> so <laughs> i think we're i think we're pretty close on this one awesome. and i think that that's fair i mean there was a time i would have priced this at maybe half of that, half of that. and a bennett i would have priced in the 300 mm -hmm. range well bennett's a little dearer than that now but the other thing that i notice about this that makes me happy happy is that I notice it's waving a little <laughs> bit yep. in the mat and I'm actually glad about that because that means it wasn't glued to the background. A real problem yeah. I find with framed Bennett pieces particularly is that a lot of people sort of saw them as poster art at the time. Mm -hmm. They didn't pay a whole lot of money for it. And so what they did is they took it and, well, we want to make sure it always stays flat. And then they glued it onto a backing. I've seen that. I've seen it so many times with Bennett pieces. And, you know, I mean, this stuff in its day it was common in the northwest these were people you saw they'd sell by mm -hmm. the roadside they uh, i remember staying in a motel in centralia washington when i was a little kid walton butts and elton bennett were the that was what was in the motel rooms it was what they had access to it was fun it looked like the area and it didn't cost a lot back then and then Bennett died, and then everything changed. And the market is getting more and more active. It's good mid-century. I think your price is right on. So this, another Goodwill find, I thought it was a planter. Uh-huh. And then I went to a vintage, um, I tried a vintage metalware and a vintage glassware. And there was, some people said it's a planter. And then other people said, no, that's an oil lamp and it needs a font that slides in with the, the adjuster. So, and I was like, okay. I, I thought it was mid-century just because of the color of the paint or enamel, I guess, on the outside. But I, yeah, such. Well, there's, there's good news and a few questions okay. about this. Um, I do agree that it probably had more to it at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, it is possible that it was an oil lamp and that a base sat in here. It would have been a cylindrical base right. and then another bulb on here. Mm -hmm. But I would say that there's an equal chance looking at the patina. You look at the inside and it's a little dark, but the yeah. edge is similarly dark. And then you look under the bottom and it's lighter because it doesn't get as much oxygen and my thought is that this may have been an urn originally there may have been a lid that is missing to this but it also could have been made as a ferner and or an ivy ball where you would just put plants in it and they would just hang over mm -hmm. so it's possible this is all that was ever there yeah. And I'm looking in the bottom, and it does seem like it had some sort of stickum in it at one That's time. That's what one of the persons who looked at it, she said mm -hmm. it has, um, it she has, thought it was 
Floral putty? Floral putty, yeah. exactly. And so that makes me think someone was using it as, as, as a flower as arranger. A, okay. So it's possible that it was part of a garniture set where there were two of these and there were flowers on either side and it never was meant to have a cover. Uh, it's it's not entirely clear. I, I'm leaning away from the oil lamp and okay. towards it either having been an urn or having been just an open pot for plants. Okay. Because of the fact that someone arranged and in it. I, I don't know. The the oil lamp theory just never hit me because I'd looked at tons of antique oil lamps and I didn't see anything on a base like that. The proportion seems a little odd. I would expect it to be a little more bulbous and a little more extended if it was an oil lamp. Mm -hmm. That's my personal feeling having seen a lot of them. Now, the other thing I can tell you about this is that this is actually not mid 20th century. Okay. This is late 19th century. It's quite a bit older, okay. actually, than you might think. And I'll tell you a couple of reasons why. First of all, uh, this very long screw coming out of the bottom, that is very typical of how they assembled metal pieces to glass pieces with a metal bale back in like the 1890s or so. And they did do oil lamps that way as well. It wasn't just uh, planters and that sort of thing. So again, that doesn't tell us for sure what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing about it is the enameling is very nice. I'm I'm thinking that this is probably is originally from Bohemia or the Czechoslovakia area. Uh -huh. And this is mercury glass. That's what I thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is a really nice thing to find. You don't see a lot of antique mercury glass. You don't see it in gold tone as much as yeah. you do in well, silver. One of the glass pages I was on trying to get information a guy was like why would you even post this there's nothing glass on this I was like dude the whole vase the is whole glass he is thought glass. it was brass oh, he thought it was brass oh was yes like, because he's it. seeing it this mm -hmm. way in a picture it's super reflective pictures can be deceiving yep. mm -hmm. exactly but this is absolutely mercury glass and it's a nice piece. I literally thought it was from the like 50s or 60s because of the colors. Because of the gold, it has a Hollywood Regency feel and yeah. could certainly go in that kind of a decor. It would have been originally part of a larger set, I'm sure. Right. Maybe a garniture set. A garniture set usually is five pieces on a mantle, so you might have had another one of these, a pair of candlesticks, and a figurine or a clock in the middle, and they would spread out across the whole thing. So if it's that and it was just meant for flowers and was always meant to have this open top and we could say it was complete, mm -hmm. then I would say that your value might be in the 225 to 250 range because old mercury glass is desirable. Okay. It's painted. It's a nice color. Now, if it turns out it's missing a piece, I might devalue it by... $75. Okay. I might say like 135 to 150 if we found that it actually was supposed to have another piece mm -hmm. that was there. Um, but I'm starting to lean more and more to it not being incomplete. I'm thinking that it just was part of a bigger set, but that I think this is the piece. Okay. If an oil lamp had sat in it, you would expect that the inside would be a lot lighter color because it would never it have gotten, gotten oxygen. A lot of Okay. And the wear on the edge seemed to be the same as the wear inside. And I wouldn't think that you would pick up and put down an oil lamp that many where times it where also. it would wear the rim like that. Right. Okay. So that's why I'm thinking either it had a lid and was an urn or it was just supposed to be a ferner and ivy ball. It was yeah. made for flowers. Nice to meet you in person. I've seen you. I, I watch you oh, YouTube that's all the time. Wonderful. What's you know? your name? Liz. Liz, it's Liz. great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Glam. And uh, she's got a booth up in here, or a case. A case. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I thought I'd seen you in here before. Yeah. That's great. I bought these a while ago, and I'm just not really sure how old they are. Okay. Well, that's always a question when you're looking at ceramics, and it does have the mark China on the bottom, and for a lot of people, when it has the Chinese mark, they immediately assume, oh, well, it must be brand new. Yeah. Um, but they're not actually brand new. We started to see Chinese marks that said China like this on pieces that were imported to this country as early as about the 1940s. Okay. Um, now, your pieces are newer than that, but oh. they're not brand new. Okay. Um, the, the mark that we 
we see is a Chinese export mark, but they also mm -hmm. have a mark in Chinese underneath. Mm -hmm. And that gives us an idea that this is at a transition time for them. And this transition, we mm -hmm. can also tell because of the uh, color, this harvest gold color. Mm -hmm. This is 1970s. This okay. is when we are just starting to normalize relations with them again. Mm -hmm. And we're just starting to get some items from them again. So they're marking things China mm -hmm. because we require it for export okay but they also have their native mark on there because yeah. they already are sending them to other asian countries for export okay and so that's why you have both marks on yeah. there so they're cute i like the design people are pretty cat crazy yeah, um, yeah. how did you Me get them? included <laughs> yes um i got them at a state sale oh very good yeah. do you remember what you paid for them i uh, it was like on sale, you know, clearance day. So probably about $30. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're a nice pair together. And, you know, I would think that uh, the value is going to be more for decorative appeal. Yeah. They're yeah. not they're not period Chinese or something that are going to be valued for that. So, okay. so my sense is that based on what you paid for it as a pair of bookends or figures, mm. I would say that maybe around 65 might be a good okay. retail price. Oh, good. And that'll give you some margin and be fair to it's still in a mm. range where somebody mm. who's looking for this sort of thing would be likely to pick them up because it's probably more likely going to be a cat collector. Well, mm. they're going to stay with me. Because oh, well, I that's like even cats. better. Well, see, there you go. We <laughs> found know. we found the ultimate customer. The right <laughs> I know. Hi there. Well, hello, George. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Good. Come on up. All right. Really cool to be here. I love this store. I can't wait Isn't to it a great store? Look around. Oh my God. It is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, Cindy Russell, a.k.a. Junk and Granny. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm so glad Pleasure to meet you in you. person. Oh, that's yeah, great. No, and I really only had this in my car because I just bought it at Goodwill. Oh. Well, let's 16, take a look. A dollar sixty nine. Oh wow! Okay, with well, my employee discount. Oh my goodness! And, and this is R.C. Gorman. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is from uh, one of his earlier gallery showings when he was still living. Right. And it says, is that a real signature? Well, I doubt it. I have okay. a feeling that that's I didn't a printed so. signature, and we're going to take a look for sure. I'm okay. pretty sure on the posters that they printed the signature, Correct. unless they also double signed it. And yes. Um, and this is something that you can use for future. I'll give you the loop. Okay. Um, this will be something I can show you so you can tell right away. Go ahead right. and look at his signature through the loop. It takes okay. a little bit of adjusting say, to your you eye. You kind of I'm it, blonde as a back it, without... Put it close to your eye and then kind of try to bring in the signature. Are you able to see? Hold on. Let's see, I've got blue. Yep, you're yep. going in the right way. Yep. Notice how there's dots like newspaper yes. print in his signature. Totally. That's how you know it's a printed signature rather okay. than an ink signature well, where you would you. see the I ink. I should things. know that by now. Oh no, no. As long as <laughs> hey, no, you know, until you do it, it's yeah. it's you know, I can say it a million times, but once right. you've done it, then you're like, Oh, I get it now. Right. Yeah. However, R.C. Gorman is good. Mm -hmm. Even his poster prints are good. I'm starting to see more people interested in old poster prints from gallery exhibitions mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. some of these artists because it kind of talks about their career. Right. And so it used to be that people are like, oh, it's an exhibition print. Well, now they're like, oh, it's an exhibition print. It's mm -hmm. the attitude has changed. I think for your dollar sixty, you know, if I had that, like I'm doing the show in Spokane mm -hmm. next weekend, mm -hmm. and they like Western there. If I mm -hmm. took a piece like that, I would probably price it around a hundred dollars okay. in a store display right. or something, and I would surround it with other Native American sure. things and make sure, it sure. part of a vignette. And okay. I would think that it could sell. I've sold them anywhere from sixty-five to about a hundred or a hundred and a quarter. It's funny because Google or eBay on their solds were anywhere from about about sixty dollars to out of hundred so yeah you know and I, I somebody has one listed right now for 9.99 yes <laughs> like please yes exactly so yeah that's cool i love it um my sister kind of turned me on to the native american stuff and you know as you can see oh i see you've got some great jewelry and in fact, i um, like this piece yeah uh, well i was curious because a customer at red plantation actually um, gave this to me and wow. I have other pieces too. These are the two of the ones she gave me. Oh, this, this is, is one nice I too. I've tried to identify Ed City, yep. Ed City? Yeah, E-D-S-I-T-T-Y. Okay. 
And this one's in Malachite. We see a lot of this in the 1980s, right. and that's about when I would think this would be from. Right. Um, wow, that's nice. Somebody gave this as a gift, huh? Yes. Very cool. Well, I'd say this is probably about a $135 gift these okay. days. Okay, okay. Um, the malachite is good, but I really like the one with yes, the turquoise with all the leaf and the detail. I have one like that, but it's, it's green. It's got the malachite in it's it. It's got the malachite mm -hmm. in it, yeah. Uh, I like the malachite, and that definitely is coming on strong, but they still pay more for the turquoise. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this has an RG mark. There is a good site if you put in Native American Sterling Maker Marks. Okay. It'll pop up for you, and you okay. can usually find most of them, and they do them in order okay. by... I might have found that. They look darker. Uh, the darker stones usually seem to be from the southern Arizona mines, and a lot mm -hmm. of those are played out now. Mm -hmm. So the darker mm -hmm. stones are starting to sell for more than the lighter stones. Mm -hmm. So that's nice about this ring, too. I would think that this could be $175 or $200 in the that's market awesome. as it is now because the market is just is going awesome. crazy for this stuff yeah. now. Thank you so much. Great, and, thank uh, you. I would love to come on your Spokane show, but I don't know if I will be able to make it. But. Second week of July, we'll have uh, the big show in Portland, Oregon, too. So. Great, George. Thank you yeah, so much. Very good to meet have you in person. Best to meet you as well. Yes, that's right. Yep, like a little snack tray, and it's fitted exactly for it so that that little base will hold in the cup when you're walking around. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did you get this? I bought it at an estate sale. Ah, okay. And, and then the piece that he brought came from the same estate sale. And was there a whole set of these, or was this the only one? It was the only one. The only one. Okay, very good. Well, at one time, there were probably either six or eight of these, and there was a period of time, especially in the 1950s, mm -hmm. where it was very popular in the era of cocktail culture. You would have little cocktail parties, and people would be walking around and standing so they'd have a snack tray, something they could hold with them, where you have your cup of coffee and mm -hmm. maybe an hors d'oeuvre or something here. Mm -hmm. And that way uh, you could carry it with you as you went around and talked to people because the idea was that there might be a lot of people in a room and you weren't just seated around a table. Right. And it was also uh, the era of more informal living. Uh, these are Japanese and they're really nicely made actually. Mm -hmm. I think what's really special about this one to me is you look and it's just such a, um, you know, you can practically see through it. They mm -hmm. actually use similar porcelain for what they call lithopane where they would actually have either, a, sometimes there'd be a, the face of a geisha girl in the bottom of right. one or sometimes even a nude figure if they were especially racy. Um, <laughs> and it was because it was so thin, you could see the design through the cup. Uh, it's really wonderfully well made. And you notice the bottom is heavier, uh, but it obviously was made to go together. Yeah. Um, do you mind me asking what you gave for it when you got it? I think it was like five bucks. Five bucks, well, yeah. that was a good deal. I usually see individual sets like this selling more in the 20 to $25 range. Okay, well, thank you very much. It's I very pretty it so and it's pretty. all hand painted, which yeah. is nice too. Yeah. Really yeah, beautiful. every detail is done by hand. If mm -hmm. you look up close, none of it is, uh, it's not a transfer decal. It's all somebody sat there and painted yeah. all that. That's what I loved about it. Okay, so if it's going to go to family and it's not necessarily an arm's length transaction, I think in fairness to yourself and to them, you know, if you sold it for basically what you would get for basically just the gold weight and the coin value. Yeah. You know, I still think the coin being a 1929 $2.5 gold piece is going to be in that $400 range. Okay. I do think that the 14 karat gold, you've got to be looking honestly at probably a 125 or 150. So I would say five to 550 would probably be fair. You know, you can do less if you want because it's family, but sure. the truth is, is that if they bought that anywhere, they would pay that. They're not gonna find a cheaper price than that. Tell me a little about this guy and how you got him. Uh, Chelsea Flea Market in New York, probably the early two, uh, 2000s. He is a uh, mechanical bank, mm -hmm. and this is how they worked. These these originally came out in the 1880s, and you see he throws the coin back into his mouth. Um, he has a name that we don't say in polite mm -hmm. company anymore, but this is what they were called Correct. back in the 1880s. And he is in really, really good shape. Now, did they tell you anything when you bought him? Mm -hmm. 
Not and that I remember. Do you mind me asking what you gave for it? I want to say like about $45. About $45. Yeah. Okay. Um, for what he is, what you paid is perfectly fine. In mm -hmm. fact, you actually got a pretty good deal. Um, so I'll tell you what he is and what he isn't. He is the Jolly N Bank. Yeah done absolutely based on the original that was done in the 1880s, but this one is not as old as that. Uh, this one is a 20th century reproduction, and there's a couple of ways that we can tell that. Where the seams join here, mm -hmm. uh, there's some pretty rough filing marks. On the originals back in the 1880s, these were actually something that were sold to adult men originally, were the main customer. They would file those very carefully so that you would never see any sort of marks like that, mm -hmm. uh, because that was part of the tell as far as quality. The other thing, and this one gets it pretty well, but you will see gaps where you can see through yeah. the piece on the reproductions and the originals are seamed really really carefully because again it was a mark of quality at the time uh, the other thing is you notice when he puts his um, it doesn't really go all the way up mm -hmm. that's because the reproductions are basically being made in the 20th century as nostalgia pieces so they figure you're not really that concerned with it being perfect it's just something to look at okay. and so that's the difference between this and the real ones. The real ones are worth about $800 to $1,000. Um, this version is probably worth more than you paid for it, but probably not more than $100. Okay. Yeah, these are all 1881 San Francisco Mint. It's got the S on the back. It looks to me like they're all the same, unless you find some others in there. Um, they're in various uncirculated states. When you get into coin collecting, uncirculated grades, they even distinguish between, well, it's uncirculated, but it got a chip on it from a, or a scratch from another coin in the bag to it's perfect and untouched. Right. I would say yours are all going to be on the lower to mid side of uncirculated, but the uncirculated makes a difference with these because yeah. there's the silver value, but then there's the collector value, and the collectors want the highest grades that they can find and they do all seem to be exactly the same day so my guess is that somebody found a roll of these at one point put a bunch of these aside these because they haven't been yeah every one of these is an 1881s so so they're all the same they are all worth about 65 dollars a piece If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.